colonial web that I was talking about is just like all these colonial countries that have been given independence, they leave them with a kind of an independence that you will still be in one web, that you need to escape to be yourself, to stand alone, be a self-reliant state. When it comes to your state, no, we will put our difference aside because all the political parties have one intention is to take the nation forward. So when it comes to our national security, you don't need to sit down there and laugh at the other side. That's very bad. That's another kind of a way that is affecting us. But it's the system that they left us with, that we should be opposition till death. And we need to reform ourselves, reform the system, reform the constitution, bring a kind of a constitution that will align with our tradition, our culture, our way of life. We are not the West. We can be educated, we can be read and writing, doing things, but we can never be the West. Our children from primary school, they, are, they should be informed about constitution. The decision makers, they, they should be concerning more about the poor people who stand on the sun to vote for them. Because they always know that when it comes to election, they will go, they'll be going looking for the poor people to come out and support them. Because that is the time that they will need them. But if they vote them already, when it comes to make decision making, Okay, I know, it's fine. Gambia is a poor state. We don't get resources. Okay, all these things is there. Okay. But, it's not fair a minister who has been secured, who has been guarded, everything given by the state, by our tax money, they will go sit there and make a, a decision of taxing the poor. But when you grow to 30, without nothing in your skull, bro, you are alone, man. Even your family, if they love you, they can only help you with, with the possibilities. Imagine you come to a level, you meet someone very rich and want to help you and then ask you, what can you do? And you cannot do nothing. How can they help you, bro? That's why every youth have to prepare. Like our parents used to say, go to school, read. Look for major, you know, look for a skill, follow a skill. There, Gambia, we are introducing a new show called with a wonderful brother called Alaji A. Jalo. Um, I will ask Alaji A. Jalo to introduce himself before we get into the program. Thank you, brother. Assalamu alaikum, Gambia. This is Alaji A. Jalo, born in Banjo T. Road, Masamba, C. Street. Number six, I went to better nursing school and I went to Methodist primary at Hagan. Then um, I got seen, then I went to Paju for my middle school, then SOS High, Barcode. Um, that's my educational career. Um, I start from there. From there, with that education, I used to recite to know what I have to know because only the education can give you ability to recite by yourself and find out what is truth and what is not. Um, that is the introduction I can tell right now. But right now, my my work is mediator. Um, I'm a multilinguist, um, and that's my job. And um, I'm a founder member of several organizations. Um, and I'm political analyst because I'm a patriotic Gambian. And if I'm part of this nation, I have to get my voice on it. So, please. Yes. I have to get my voice on it. <laughs> I respect that. Um, every citizen has a voice. Yeah. Um, actually, how do you see the Gambia before and now when it comes to development? Okay. The Gambia at whole, um, I think if you check it out from the 70s to the 80s, we always had that in relation target to be like Singapore because we are all a group in a nation part and um, but um, how things are going and the overstays of governments does let Gambia stay far behind still now we cannot even think about Singapore anymore right now we, we would rather try to eliminate Rwanda countries like that because Singapore has left us behind um, our nation um, have this problem within 
um, the political system, but it's all started from the colonial system and the post-colonial system that they left us with. You know, these are the things, and it's not only uh, Gambia, but it's the whole Africa. The way I see the situation um, after this post-political, democratical governing system. If we are to follow that system, we are not going out of this web. Because there is a web I call the post-colonial post web, whereby you must have to strive to get out of it to reach your goals. If we remain there only, we will, our governments will be depending on taxpayers' money to pay their salary and that's it. And we will not be going nowhere. Anything that we want will be loan, loan, loan. And this loan we get in outside, it comes with interest. And plus, with a foreign currency, you know, that, that doesn't help us at all. From this, our fallen Gambian dollars, how can we pay a loan of 50 million euro with an interest of 5%? How, can, but, how but, possible? But first, would you say, are we still colonized by the West? Yeah, um, the, the post-colonial web that I was talking about is just like all these colonial countries that have been given independence. They leave them with a kind of an independent that you will still be in one way. That you need to escape to be yourself, to stand alone, be a self-reliant state. If you follow that, that, that lane that they leave us from the colonial era, we will never make it. What we can, uh, what, what we're going to do is remembering, fighting each other, playing the, um, the political game, which is there, which we're going to tell you, Everybody have a right. Yes, everybody have a right. But still, not everybody is capable of doing certain things in Africa. Okay, just like the when the presidency come last election, I see thousands of candidates want to be president. Most of these people cannot even rule one house because ruling is not only by getting the heart to rule. Or I have seen on the paper, I have a right to rule. It doesn't work like that. That's why our Gambian system, all the Africans, we need some reforms. The, the system that they left us with, it will lead us to be fighting day and night. We will never reach an agreement. Because I see in Af Africa is the only place when something comes up concerning our state, the, the security of our state, there will still be opposition. That is absurd. That, that you cannot do that, bro. When it comes to your state, no, we will put our difference aside because all the political parties have one intention is to take the nation forward. So when it comes to our national security, you don't need to sit down there and laugh at the other side. That's very bad. That's another kind of a way that is affecting us. But it's the system that they left us with, that we should be opposition till death. So, it's, so but, but, but uh, to come in there, mm. what do you think should be done to mm. change those systems? Okay. First of all, we need to change our institutional system, okay? The mindsets, you know? All I see is sometimes um, the well-educated, they are not being honest to the illiterates who are not educated, because Africa, this is our situation here. And um, I have to touch one part. The constitution that they gave us, that they make us build, it works with a system Okay, a system whereby everybody has to respect the rule of law or else will pay the price. Okay, in Africa, that kind of a system cannot work. How? Okay, someone who is struggling to make a daily meal, how can you charge them because of their error they made against the law? If you charge them, meaning that you're jailing them because they are poor, they don't even get what to eat. You cannot, so it does mean that um, we need to reform ourselves, reform the system, reform the constitution, bring a kind of a constitution that will align with our tradition, our culture, our way of life. We are not the West. We can be educated, we can be read and writing, doing things, but we can never be the West. Because the West, they already have a concrete system that has been working for ages, let's say centuries, and they accept it. Bro, I tell you, in Africa, any state you go, um, half of the state, they don't even care what is the law of the state, okay? And it's the same that all of us went to school up to grade 12, and you will never have a lesson about our law, the Gambian law. If you, know, if, you are not, if you are not doing arts to be part of government, you'll never know nothing about law, and that is crazy. 
our children from primary school they are they should be informed about constitution let 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 be constitutional people let 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 become people that all of us will accept on one rule and respect it it is not just okay uh, this is son of due so uh, forget it we can when they give the opportunity to change in the constitution what are the main things you will change in the constitution key factors okay the key factors are first of all we will bring out the mentality you cannot put an angle on poor people who don't even have a meal to eat to put them in charges. That means that we are ready to fill up our jails. In the West, with all this kind of a law, they have what they call house arrest. But what are, what are those, those charges that they put on poor people? If I'm a real Gambian and I love my country and I face another citizen doing wrong, before I will jump to conclusion to arrest them, I will try to communicate try to make them to make them aware that look all what you do the law doesn't allow this you have to be informed so sometimes in africa we find many people in jail who are innocent about the law that they have been wrong so then i say that the system that they bring us is just that okay let's tell it to the educated one and leave the the, the ignorance in darkness that's not fair you cannot take a step like that if you want to talk about okay education system uh, institutional only the people who are reading and writing and understanding english can even get this thing what i'm talking about whilst we we just want to jump uh, a leap we, we are leaping a system that we forget and that could help because i i believe that if the whole state have understood the the constitution of gambia when they are well informed, we have TVs now, we have many TVs. Actually. Why not? We have a TV whereby we talk about, especially about the governing system. Why not um, our expert don't come to the TV and talk to the people in our local dialects? We have them. Every office has all type of dialects. So why not they don't come to the people and talk? But what I see is sometimes most of them, they, they, they take advantage of it because they know it gives them another advantage of being on top of another one who is equal with you, a citizen of the state. Because we don't have to um, take advantage of our education and then um, oppress the, the non-educated people. So to, to heal all this problem, we need to inform them. If you see, they say that they don't allow camouflage in Gambia. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. They, um, they say that um, they don't allow camouflage in the Gambia for others. You know why that? Me, I said no. Before saying that, why not? inform the citizen well that someone who is not well officer cannot arrest you that the citizen should know that if someone should come and arrest me with a, just a cloth he should produce his card okay absolutely we should be informing the citizen about this not to say that um you should not dress uh, you are fooling the people no let's um let's await the people who to be fooled tomorrow so that if anybody who want to use and uh, just uniform and attack them they can call the cops then one has to show his badge first, his or her badge, yeah, before badge, you get arrested. Yeah. Yeah. You don't to identify yourself. Yeah, you have to identify. And, and most, of the, most of the time, if you go to the law, any arrest used to get a warrant. Okay? It's unless and until they meet you in a crime spot. Okay? But without that, if someone just wants to take you like that, they should present something. There should be explanation. You don't have to come and bully people because of advantage of a uniform. And the citizen to the civilian don't have to disrespect the officer who is working because of his salary or whatever it, it is. So a country, to build a country, we don't have to bring this kind of a separation. The officers will sit there and say that, Hararek, ni yuwa, ni akni, ni deme, ni tamde ni opare. Wala citizen tamde ni wa, polisi bao ni. That is a bad move. Um, recently, last year, there are many murder cases. And, and all I see is um, the, the prime suspect have been taken to court, dressing well, having nice, having fans, even, you know, it's just like we are celebrating them. Um, this, all these things, Gambia, we don't need this, okay? If someone may ask me, what will you do on murder case? If someone is found guilty who killed someone abroad, there should be direct seven years in prison before any court. Let the people out there be knowing that rain in Chidekabi, seven years, Ninkotogmail to Balanyo Wasa affair. You know, we have to be strict in certain things. That is not dictatorship. You see, I tell you something, bro. You see, um, security of my border, okay? Um, the resources of my state, 
okay and the um how to call it how do you call it um being patriotic <laughs> okay you see these three, three things if i'm uh if i'm going to make a decision i will be a dictator on these things because i will not joke with it you see uh, the gambian taxpayer money there should be no one who will get an advantage picking a park taking home you know and it's happening in gambia and some people are very normal with it how can it be possible someone be taken as a minister okay and we all know the salary of a minister but all of a sudden they're starting to build a mansion of two million bro let's be honest here sometimes it's not about jealousy hadn't been you have been doing it before or we know your 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 value what you get people will not think otherwise but if you are another guy like me from nowhere being a minister for two months three months you want to get a project of a seven million dollars what's going on bro you know sometimes this is not about only corruption but sometimes i see it as wickedness you know you don't have to be this kind of bad because you know you know the condition of those women carrying a plate of fruit to sell in the morning they will ask them to pay in the morning 25 dollars in lempo before they start selling yes, i'm aware of that one okay imagine those okay yeah. imagine that tax money travel to the box of the state reach a minister and he take it put um he take bunch of it and use his personal and his family issue and then what they will say how do you think of takela more today bro see i get hard to say that's right yeah i understand so jikobi ye den ko wara den den ci wara taxaw su ñoo defar suñu loi bi han den wara defar loi bo xamne def kat yi dañ wara tok degane mané so defé li li mo la da you know so ki sété ñepp dina dañ nama ya jam there are certain things you have no ko dan jappé han everybody see the results you know because we have to be real when it comes to our tax money okay ki ya welcome sa ya jam what are some of the key things he initiated uh, in the gambia first of all i will tell you security you know the security was different level in the gambia uh, i remember that time in the gambia if we just get out around 12 making a stroll you will find a pickup passing you by to say you that they are around the security is intact you know it was not um you will not see someone who is just crazy say i want to kill uh, i want to kill someone it it all fade away you know and it was before and the other thing is in our borders you know so we mean he, he makes sure so that all those no, things are in, I, I in like, place i like the way he handled you know when you know um um you know a president you ask you are you ask any time you speak you are speaking for a state you are representing your country okay and when it comes to your borders you don't have to compromise nothing about it yeah because you know why try it and go to another state then you will know that how those people are serious with their borders then you realize that gambia we have to be more tough on our borders we have to be more tough on our tax monies you know and 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 i'm urging all these um civil civil servants you know all everybody who's working on government let them have mercy on the poor people man bro because sometimes i see the government strategy that they will bring um to raise fund um i think the decision makers they they should be concerning more about the poor people who stand on the sun to vote for them because they always know that when it come to election they will go they'll be going looking for the poor people to come out and support them because that is the time that they will need them but if they vote them already when it come to make decision making okay i know it's fine gambia is a poor state we don't get resources okay all these things is there okay but it's not fair a minister who has been secured who has been guard everything given by the state by our tax money they will go sit there and make a, a decision of taxing the poor to make fun that's crazy bro right now gambia it's not normal you pay 10 dollars a kurban of bread i tell you one thing see government will be gone if the government wanted the tax that they will raise on the food export huh if they want to help the poor if they reduce that tax the price will automatically reduce but all these things to um the GRA should be going to tv anytime they have a choice um they make a decision to make some changes or raise the cost of the 
important Crisis export, export all this yeah. thing um they should be coming to the tv talk to the people inform the people look this is what happening we have to raise the tax on that so this will result in the coming days or in the coming weeks the price of this will increase okay this is the reason why and the money will be going there you know they have to come to be honest to us okay we voted for them and we are paying tax okay and um uh, the most the most saddest thing is the poor people they are the most um, they are the most who are left behind because there are some people no matter how the price come they will go buy a dozen and go they get it okay but not all gambians get it we have to concern we have to think about these poor people too and they are the majority i can tell you the gambia the 80 percent is poor bro the 80 percent is struggling with life so um uh, our decision making we can we can we can be starting reducing from here adding there okay. you are saying remove here and then add there okay I'll so what you. should be removed and what should be added um what i think is um the most important thing in gambia here is three rice flour and sugar you see this thing all this food stuff is our daily bread bro okay gambia is bread that we survive with and rice so i'm begging the press uh, the government the the decision makers let them cause in there let them take a care of the side of our uh, how we feed in the gambia let them try and reduce that tax let let the, our food have less tax and you see other things like alcohol you know the private sector things which are not favoring us those are the things that should be high in tax you know absolutely even there are things that we citizens we need we buy every day they can raise them and reduce the food because the same person who is going to pay there is the one who wants to go and feed their family so if we if, if we can bring up a strategies or a team that can uh, valutize uh, the, these things here and try to to make a balance because the most important thing is the feeding gambia here bro i see one different thing on Sunday, it's just like a Monday. You know why? Many people, if they don't work on that Sunday, they will not chop in that Monday. That's right. So it's crazy. So um, uh, what is going to be your advice to the youths? Uh, brother, the youths, education is the first thing. You know, if you grow and your head is empty, it's a risk to be a criminal. Straightforward. There is no edit, bro. If you've grown up to be a man, having your likes, things you want for yourself, arriving to a level that you should be having things by yourself. And in that level, you don't get any skills, no education, bro, it will, it will be difficult, you know? You will end up using your, your power to survive. And who knows? So the first thing for the youth, let them put the party aside and get the brain filled up with stuff skills and intelligence because this life this generation is different with the past one we when we are young you can find a house one man walk and everybody will eat but nowadays in gambia everybody walk and still things are hard you know it's different um and, and nowadays this world have no mercy this world just like growing without blessings this world is become more wicked you know so now what happened is everybody you are standing alone so you will have to be prepared when you have to stand alone you already have uh, ideas or if in ways and means how to survive that's why the youths my brother anybody who tell them to read it's not it's, it's not telling them the bad thing let them hold that thing man bro fi so mage amulo meche jangulo demga danga neka wakati wow well, I'm going to say, wow, you will not make a choice. You will not make a decision. Generation Bobo then told you, this generation, if you cannot put anything on the table, you have nothing to say. Even your choice, what you want, if you don't get the cash, you will not make it. So what will help you with that is to, as a young person, get the education, get the stuff. Hale dafa janga, hale imbiri hale moi janga. Any, if you are young, your whole mission is training and learning. Because a storm is coming when you grown up to 30 whereby nobody will even care where whether you sleep or not because when you kid 
your family will take care of you. If you are late, they will look for you. Yes, you are a kid, boy. You are a kid. But when you grow to 30, without nothing in your skull, bro, you are alone, man. Even your family, if they love you, they can only help you with, with the possibilities. <laughs> okay, let me tell you one example. Imagine you come to a level, you meet someone very rich and want to help you and then ask you, what can you do? And you cannot do nothing. How can they help you, bro? That's why every youth have to prepare. Like our parents used to say, go to school, read. Look for major, you know, look for a skill, follow a skill. Anything that you start from zero, it will end up a professional. You know? So that's why for the youths, my brother, if you see many, many ignorant in the street, I think the education is missing somewhere and the skills. Because the survival of this generation is skills and education. Without it, my brother, even though you, you are born with jewelries and it will all fade away. Because it's a different generation nowadays. It's a different generation nowadays. Mm. So how do you see the future of the Gambia? Okay, the future of the Gambia is very open. It's very, very, very open. Um, respect um, to the last election with all what happened here. And um, before next election, um, we pray that God may give us peace and um, shower us with blessing until the next election. Because um, uh, right now we are in transitional system. You know, after 22 years of another president, um, it's just not easy to come and, you know, bring back things to that, especially when the country is poor. Gambia is poor, bro. We are poor. That's the basic fact. And, um, and when we are poor, we don't have money. That's why we don't need corruption. So, we can put it in the middle of the country. We can't put it in the middle of the country. They Do you know that um, with all the salaries we are paying our government from the cleaners to the president, these salaries are our tax money, okay? That's why I, I don't like the idea that um, the, the ignorant will be left behind, that um, they, they should not be informed that they are the one paying the president. Look, if you want a country to be sweet, let the president know that we are paying him. Let the police know that we are paying them. And let the civilian know that the police is protecting them. This is the reality of a nation. You know? Why we have to be fighting? Why we have to be having difference? The political game is a game of products. Who will see, who will talk. And if the other talk doesn't change the fact, it's still one house. Just like our family house. We can be fighting, doing whatever. At last, last, we will sleep together. And we will eat right. together. That's right. That's family. We have been fighting with our sisters, brothers. But at the end of the day, you will go to the same house. You will so, eat the same table. Meaning we'll, that patriotism is lacking. Yeah, um, um, sometimes our ego. You see, my brother. Your personal things, you have to keep it to yourself and come to a national issue. We have to address this. Yeah? yeah. Anybody who gets your personal issue with someone, keep it to yourself and go solve it with someone. Don't use our tax money to solve your personal ego problems. We don't like that. And we should not even allow it. You know? For the Gambia, brother, the coming years, what the luck is, um, I see last election, I see many signing youths who are coming to the game. Because we Gambia, we are known of having a politician, only old politician, you know. But now, um, another thing that I'm happy about is um, this um, the debate system that they brought. This debate system is the real deal, okay? For every candidate who want to be, who want to sit on top of our tax money, my brother, they have to come in front of us, tell us who they are, what they got, and what can they do, and what is their project of plan. By normalizing Nafi Hayabi, wow, wow, Saifila Nefer, wow, Legu Moto, family, Minami, Samu America. You, you must worry, Jay, bro. That's right. Must worry, Jay. Because you name them, they jail Kohanga from nowhere, you're consuming the whole state. You're seeing billions of tax paying money. You know? It's not done. Let's try to bring in well pre prepared people who are ready for the game, who are ready for the team, who get the country in heart. I'm not talking about those who get a plan to, to, to build their city where they came from. We are not here for that. 
Gambia is a whole state and a small state, and it could be treated as one home. Why you want to cut it and cut it, bring in differences with one state?